Hey, welcome back to The Breakdown, seen exclusively at ATV.ca and A Sports Extra. I'm Norman James, along with Brent Lale. 46-10, the Western Mustangs dispose of the Queens Gales at homecoming. It was a sloppy day, but an extravaganza nonetheless, because Western looking mighty good right now, exacting revenge on the team that beat them in last year's Yates Cup. Uh, someone that I know who's very close to the team seems to think that uh, the Western Mustangs will be competing for the Yates Cup in 2010. If it doesn't happen that way, he will be completely surprised. They're five and one. Do you agree with that assessment, or do you think there's some, still some time for Western to falter? Well, I think they're going to win the next two games, which makes them seven and one, which gives them a home game. Mm -hmm. So then, the only team right now that anyone really should be scared of, other than Ottawa, would be Laurier, who seems to have turned their program around from that disastrous yeah. 46-1 loss in Week One. Well, Laurier just rolled over Guelph, and I think they're kind of getting things back to where they were supposed to be at the beginning. So. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how Laurier progresses, but I still think Western getting the buy in round one uh, when they after they finish seven and one, which it looks like they will, should be a win away from a Yates Cup, and I, I would see them in Ottawa. Unless Ottawa loses a game before then, then who knows? Then maybe Western hosts the Yates Cup, but I think Western will be one of the two teams in the Yates Cup. Back-to-back -back Yates Cup from Western in 2007, 2008. Uh, they did not get the bye the first time around. They got the bye the next time. Things worked out for them last year. They did not get the bye, went into Kingston and lost to Queens. Um, the thing about this team, albeit uh, you know, it's an incredible squad, lots of talent, I just don't know if you can go ahead and write them in as the Yates Cup champion yet. You know, they can go into the playoffs on such a high and then stumble out of the gate in the first half and be behind the eight ball and not know how to overcome that adversity because they haven't faced it yep. yet, Brent. So, uh, you know, is this a situation where we will believe it when we see it? I think so, but the good thing for them, at least anyways, is if they get a home game, they've been so dominant at TD Waterhouse Stadium. The team is built on speed, their defense is built on speed. So if they get to play on that turf, where they've destroyed everyone this year. The problems that they've played on the road in Guelph and in Ottawa on those grass fields mm -hmm. has been a little sloppy and a little tough for them. But if they get that home game in the semifinals and they play at TD Waterhouse, uh, I think they're easily in the Yates Cup because they're so good at home. And if for some reason Ottawa falters and they get to host the Yates Cup, I think they'll be the champions by just sheer fact that they're so dominant in front of the 10,000 at TD Waterhouse and on that turf. How do you think practices are going in the nation's capital this week? Ottawa, the top team in the OUA, one of the best teams in the country, loses to one of the doormats in Canadian University football for the past decade and even more, the U of T Blues. Is this a situation where Ottawa coughed up the ball or is the sleeping giant beginning to awake in Canada's biggest metropolis. Some of the numbers I heard were uh, Toronto had won four games since 2001, yeah. and one of those was already this year. You know, that was just, I, like I said, I've been following the OUA for 13 years or so, and I have never seen anything come up out of this, but maybe Toronto going in okay. the right direction. Like, you know, Ottawa maybe may have been a little overrated at the beginning, but I no one saw this coming. U of T looks like they might make the playoffs too. There's a possibility. It's going to be between Windsor and U of T, and wouldn't it be yeah. something if U of T knocked Windsor out of the playoffs in a year where Mike Morenci was already a guy who people wanted to run out of town in the first place, and if U of T knocks them out to make the playoffs and, and Windsor is out? You can't be <laughs> feeling confident if you're Frank Sinopoli and the GGs after losing to the U of T Blues. But I have a feeling we're going to see some surprising stuff over the next month. And hopefully for Western's sake, uh, they're not on the short end of any kind of surprise. And instead going forward towards uh, maybe a, a Vanier Cup or a, destiny, a date with Laval, uh, the clear favorite right now. Nazem Kadri does not make the Toronto Maple Leafs, at least as of this point. I think it was the right move. He was not great in the preseason. And hey, Merrick's buddy, Tim Brent, gets the third line center role. So uh, Nazem Kadri's going to have to do his thing on the farm. Do you think that's the best thing for him? And do you think he'll be with the Leafs sooner rather than later? Uh, I think eventually he'll make it up. But I do have to give credit for Merrick a couple oh. of weeks ago saying that Tim Brent was going to be the third line oh. center. I was pulling for Nazem. I thought that it would have been the best idea for him to be there and have his potential. But, you know, maybe if he didn't earn it, then they're going to make him earn it. And he's going to go down to the American Hockey League. I think he'll eventually fight his way up because I don't think the third or fourth line center roles are by far set in stone. Um, so I think eventually he will get a shot. But for now, uh, until he gets things correct, he, he's not going to play in the National he's Hockey League. He's still a developing product. And sometimes we get caught up in the, well, draft 
he goes to the team, he joins the team, and now he's an NHLer. It's going to take a few years for someone like Nazem Kadri to become a full-fledged NHLer. This is not Naz or, uh, Sidney Crosby. It's not Alex Ovechkin. It's not Pat Kane. He's an unbelievably talented hockey player, but it's going to take some time to get this guy up to NHL quality. Maybe it's a full year in the A. For his sake, I hope he is not rushed. If he has a 15-goal campaign early, and then they bring him up to try to help the Leafs who are struggling offensively, it could get ugly. Maybe he needs to be down there for the entire year because let's face it, the Leafs aren't winning a cup anytime soon, although I do think they're going to make the playoffs. Yes, yeah, so I think it'll help for him in, in the American Hockey League because as Ron Wilson said, he has to get those junior things mm -hmm. out of his game where, you know, he doesn't stop on a dime and skate backwards. He kind of goes for a, you know, a skate, like he said in those games. And, and that kind of things he could get away with in junior because he was so talented. But, you know, when you get to this level and you've got 20 guys who are professionals and men who have to feed their family on their job, yeah. you know, you're in a war. And if you don't you know bring it hundred percent every night some other guy who's like I said family depends on him making the check that week is gonna want it more than you and they're gonna beat you out I think he needs to up the intensity level and he's gonna realize that if he wants to move up from the AHL to the NHL he's just gonna have to dial it up a notch we've got 30 seconds everybody's excited to see Roy Halladay in the playoffs but I am not. He is no longer a Blue Jay, so I do not care what happens to Roy Halladay. He is the best pitcher of a generation. He's not a Blue Jay, so I don't care what he does in the playoffs. I want to see Canada's only major league team get back to the playoffs. Yeah, it would be nice. And, you know, I think, unfortunately for Jays fans who didn't like Halladay leaving, I think the Phillies are actually going to do well in the yeah. playoffs because they are so deep in the pitching staff. But what a season for the Jays, 85 and 77, awesome. by far exceeding expectations, probably 20 wins more than anybody thought. Props to Cito and Jose Bautista. The best pitching staff in the the league for the next four to five years. Football scores 41 nothing. MTS over Saunders and CCH dials it down 36 nothing in their win over Strathroy. So an interesting week of sports. Can't wait for the next. We'll see if we can find Merrick. In the meantime, for Brent, I'm Norm. We'll see you next time on The Breakdown.